Welcome grade 10s to this lesson on quantitative aspects of chemical change. Today we will learn about the molar concentration of solutions and we will learn how we can make a standard solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture, meaning that the components making up the solution are all in a single phase, hence it is the same throughout. A solution is made of two or more substances that are mixed together. The substance in the largest amount is the solvent. In this case, it is the water. The substance that dissolves in the solvent is called the solute. Here, the solute is sugar. The sugar dissolves in the water to form a sugar solution. The concentration of a solution depends on the ratio of the amount of solute to the amount of solvent. If the amount of solvent remains constant, then the concentration of the solution is a function of the solute. This means that any change in the amount of solute affects the concentration. The concentration is expressed as the ratio of amount of solute to amount of solvent. Keke will tell us more about the concentration of solutions. Let's join her now. Have a look at these two beakers I have on the mobile lab. They both contain salt water solutions. Can you see any difference between these solutions? Do you agree that both solutions are colorless, clear and of the same volume? The solute, sodium chloride, has clearly dissolved completely in the water, the solvent. Although you cannot see any difference between these samples of salt water, sight is not the only way I could check if they are the same, is it? If I taste them, I can definitely tell you that solution B is more salty than solution A. Can you think why there is a difference in the saltiness of these two solutions? That's right. Obviously, I used more salt to make solution B than I used to make solution A. When solution A was made, one gram of sodium chloride was dissolved in a volume of 100 centimeters cubed of water to make a solution. But when solution B was made, four grams of solute were dissolved in the same volume of water. If we looked at these solutions on a microscopic level, we would see that there are more sodium and chloride ions in solution B than in solution A. In solution A, the ions are quite far apart from each other, while they are packed closer together in solution B. To describe this arrangement of ions in a solvent, we can use two words, dilute and concentrated. When there are a few particles of solute in a fixed volume of solvent, the solution is dilute. And if there are a lot of solute particles to the same volume of solvent, the solution is concentrated. Although these terms are useful, they do not give us a precise description of how dilute or concentrated a solution is. In order to describe this more precisely, we need to be able to calculate the concentration of a solution. There are two ways of expressing the concentration of a solution. One way is to measure the number of grams of solute, divide it by the volume of the solution, and express the concentration of the solution in grams per decimeter cubed. The second way is to work out the number of moles of solute, divide it by the volume of the solution, and express the concentration of the solution in moles per decimeter cubed. Let's start our investigation of solutions by going to the lab. Hey there guys, I'm going to show you how to make a solution of sodium hydroxide of known concentration. Now to do that, I need to weigh out the mass of the solute. Now the first thing I need to do is to weigh out the mass of the empty watch glass. Make sure it's clean, there's no single dust grain on it. And I've got exactly 16.72 grams on it. Now remember, it's very important to always record your values. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is to now weigh out the mass of my solute, sodium hydroxide, very carefully. Now I need to get a total of 20.72 grams. There we go. 
Now the total mass here is 20.72, which means I have exactly 4,0 grams of my solute. Remember, always important to put it down. 2.72 grams, which means the difference is 4,0 grams of my solute. Right. Now next I need to transfer my solute into the flask. I'm going to need a funnel to do that. There we go. Now remember to be very careful because you don't need a single grain of the solute falling out of here. Use my spatula to pull it all in. Now what I'm going to do is going to rinse my watch glass with distilled water to make sure that every single grain of the solid is inside here. We go and rinse the funnel as well. Good, good, good. Now I'm going to just pour a little more distilled water. There you go. Now what you need to do is to seal the flask. Now, when all the solute is completely dissolved, I'm going to add a little more distilled water. Now this flask contains exactly 100 centimeters cubed when the volume of the solution has reached this mark here. Now let's add the distilled water. Now let's go back to the studio and work out the concentration of this solution. I hope you noticed how careful Aaron was when making up his solution for sodium hydroxide. You should also make it a habit to work accurately when preparing for and conducting experiments. Now, in chemistry, when you prepare a solution of known concentration like we just did, we say that we prepare a standard solution. This solution could be used to find the concentrations of other solutions if their concentrations are not known or to make other solutions that are more dilute. Now, let's look at the data we have about Aaron's solution and try to work out the concentration. We know that the mass of the sodium hydroxide is 4,0 grams. We also know that the volume of the solution is 100 centimeters cubed. But before we start working out the concentration, we have to consider the units of volume that we're working with first. The unit of volume used by chemists is decimeter cubed. One decimeter cubed is exactly the same volume as one liter. You should remember that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. That means that 1,000 centimeters cubed equals 1,000 milliliters, which equals one liter. Now we are ready to start calculating the concentration of the standard solution that Aaron prepared. Although the concentration can be expressed in grams per cubic decimeter, we will look at the calculation in moles per cubic decimeter. For this solution, we know the mass of the solute, but the volume of the solution is in centimeters cubed. We will need to convert the volume to decimeters cubed. Can you work this out? I'm sure you'll agree that to do the conversion, we have to divide 100 centimeters cubed of solution by 1,000. This gives us a volume equal to 0, 0,1 decimeters cubed. Now all that's left is to do the calculation. Remember we said earlier that chemists used two ways of expressing the concentration of solutions. The second one here that includes the number of moles of solute present is called molar concentration. To calculate molar concentration, we divide the number of moles of solute by the volume of solution. The units for molar concentration are mole.dm to the minus 3 or m, which stands for molar. To calculate molar concentration, we can use the equation C equals the number of moles of solute, N divided by the volume of solution, V. Where would we start if we wanted to calculate the molar concentration of our two solutions? By calculating the number of moles present in each of these solutes, of course. Here's the data to help you do this calculation. 
Let's check your answers. First, we calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride. This is 58,5 gram per mole. Then, we calculate the number of moles by dividing the mass by the molar mass of sodium chloride. This gives an answer of 0,068 moles. Obviously, we would then do the same calculation for sodium hydroxide. The molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole and the number of moles present is 0,1 mole. Using this information, can you now calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution? Let's do the calculation together. We need to use the formula C equals N over V. Now we can substitute the values that we calculated for the sodium hydroxide solution. Remember, for this formula, the unit for the volume should always be in cubic decimeters. They are 0,1 mole for the number of moles of sodium hydroxide and 0,1 cubic decimeters for the volume. This gives us an answer of 1 mole per cubic decimeter. That can also be expressed as 1 molar solution. Now, let's use the same method to find the molar concentration of the sodium chloride. They are 0,068 mole for the number of moles and 0,1 cubic decimeters for the volume. The molar concentration of the sodium chloride solution is 0,68 mole per cubic decimeter or 0,68 molar. It seems that our two solutions are not of equal concentration after all. Even though the solutes used had the same mass, the solution of sodium hydroxide will have more ions present in the same volume of solvent. More ions in the same solution means that the solution is more concentrated than our sodium chloride solution. Looking at our calculations, I'm sure you'll agree that finding the molar concentration of a solution is a more accurate way of expressing concentration. And that's why molar concentration, or mole per decimeter cubed, is the SI unit for concentration. However, in industry, where large quantities of the same solution is made over and over, expressing concentration in grams per decimeter cubed is still useful because mass is easier to work with on a huge scale. Thank you, Keke, for all that helpful information. We have time to do one more calculation together. What mass of sodium carbonate with the formula Na2CO3 is required to prepare a 0,5 molar solution with a volume of 250 cubic centimeter? If we look carefully at the problem, we see that we have to calculate mass, and for that, we need the number of moles. On the data sheet, there is a formula that relates concentration, mass, molar mass, and volume. C, the concentration of the solution in mole per cubic decimeter, is equal to small m, the mass of the compound in grams, divided by capital M, the molar mass in grams per mole, multiplied by the volume V in cubic decimeters. We were given the concentration, the formula of the chemical, and the volume, but the volume is given in cubic centimeters. First, we need to calculate the molar mass of sodium carbonate and convert the volume to cubic decimeters. Using the periodic table, we find that the molar mass of sodium carbonate is 106 grams per mole. To convert cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters, we divide the value by 1,000. Therefore, 250 cubic centimeters will be 0,25 cubic decimeters. Now we can substitute these values into the formula to calculate the mass. 0, 0,5 equals the mass m divided by the product of 106 and 0, 0,25. Manipulating the formula so that mass is the subject of the formula, we get mass to be 13,25 grams. This means that exactly 13,25 grams of sodium carbonate must be dissolved in 200 milliliters of water to form a 0,5 molar solution of sodium carbonate.
It's important that you practice more of this type of question, and you can find more questions in the task video for this series and on our website. In our next lesson, we will look at the relationship between the number of moles and the molar volume of gases. Until then, goodbye.